<laughs> well, a 2021 international scientific study has proven that forests across the mountainous regions of Africa store far more carbon than was previously known. Well, our Rise environmental correspondent Leila Johnson Salami has carried out research on the carbon concentration of these forests and what this means for Africa. In this report, she proposes carbon financing as a possible way to protect these ecosystems and analyzes Nigeria's journey into carbon markets. Afro-montane forests, common to the mountainous regions of Africa and the Southern Arabian Peninsula, are both understudied and underreported. In the history of ecology, not much has been known scientifically about these ecosystems. But in 2021, the world became more aware of their significance after an international study published in the online science journal Nature found that Afro-Montane forests store more carbon per hectare than the world's largest rainforest, the Amazon. A remarkable prospect, sure. But what exactly do these findings mean? A carbon store is simply the amount of carbon locked up in the biomass or, or the soils of any ecosystem, whether it's a forest or a grassland. Firstly, it highlights the value of these montane systems, which are quite threatened, having uh, been degraded uh, overall. Ngalnyaki Forest Reserve in Taraba State is the only montane forest plot in Nigeria featured in this comprehensive study and one of the only surviving plots left in the country. According to the study, African tropical montane forests contain an average of just under 150 tonnes of carbon per hectare, which is approximately two-thirds greater than the last estimates given by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The paper has two main messages. The, the, for, the mountain forests of Africa have high carbon, more than we expected or more than the previous literature had shown. Of course, there were few <laughs> studies published on this before. And the second part of the message of the paper is that the deforestation rates are higher on the mountains and the lowlands. So we need more action, more conservation attention. One way to protect these highly threatened habitats is through carbon financing. According to the CDP, an international not-for-profit that runs the Environmental Impact Global Disclosure System, Africa is responsible for just 3.8% of global carbon emissions. Yet, some of the worst effects of climate change are felt here. And as emissions have no borders, African ecosystems have been storing carbon and other greenhouse gases for some of the largest global emitters since the start of the industrial age. Now, as the world struggles to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, the 2021 UN Climate Change Conference, COP26, finally set guidelines for carbon markets to be regulated under the Paris Agreement, creating conditions for markets to grow and thrive. To first understand what the carbon market is and what carbon trading is all about, you know, we've all, we all agree that um, we need to reduce carbon emissions and um, governments, um, since the Paris Agreement have set quotas, you know, that kind of limits the amount of uh, carbon, you know, you can emit. And if you are staying within that target, then you don't have a penalty or, 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 or a tax, or a carbon tax to pay. But if you go above that penalty or that, that, that target, then you have a tax or penalty to pay. Now, if you're able to stay within or lower than that, then you have carbon credits, okay? Uh, so if you have carbon credits, you know, uh, the carbon markets or carbon finance ascribes values to those credits so that you can trade them. Robust verification processes by third-party verifiers are an important component of carbon markets. Gold Standard, developed in 2003 under the leadership of the World Wildlife Fund and other international NGOs, verifies carbon credits traded in the voluntary carbon market. Rather than choosing projects specifically, Gold Standard identifies where carbon finance is most needed with credibility. So we define the eligible activity types and then set the specific rules 
and requirements that projects need to follow to gain gold standard certification. And then projects come to us seeking certification generally because they understand that using gold standard can help them deliver more impact, which the buyers of the credits value. So quite a few projects are undergoing gold standard certification in Nigeria. All of these projects fall into what we call community service activities. Um, those that provide clean energy, clean water, clean cooking solutions to local communities. In addition to the social benefits, this project reduces wood consumption, one of the main drivers of land use change in Nigeria, allowing for a natural recovery of forest or reforestation. To maximize the potential of carbon markets through Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, countries like Nigeria will need to develop carbon mechanism frameworks to support this. According to Nigeria's Minister of State for Environment, Barrister Sharon Ikeazo, the Ministry of Environment is currently in the process of establishing a long-term framework for this, as this is mandatory in Nigeria's Climate Change Act 2021. While the, the framework is established, I think there are different tools that Nigerian government can use. For example, the Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, which is the International Carbon Trading Scheme, um, uh, where a number of increasing number of governments are reaching out to Gold Standard to, to see if they can use the platform to ensure that they are trading uh, credible carbon assets uh, according to the rules of Article 6. The way to go about it for Nigeria is to look at all the forests that we have. Let's ensure that we can conserve them and let's have a program for replanting the forest. So the forests we have are carbon sinks. The African forest can actually absorb more carbon than even the Amazon forest. So one of the things that we should do is to publicize this fact, you know, so that everybody knows. And the fact that we have a lot of the mountain forests in Africa is also uh, an additional benefit that can boost our carbon credentials. Mr. Samila Zubairu is the president and CEO of the Africa Finance Corporation, a development finance institution established in 2007. The AFC is the first African supranational to have issued a green bond. So a green bond is essentially um, a financing instrument that you know, is targeting um, either renewable energy, climate, or social um, projects. We are looking at the whole march towards energy transition within the significant energy deficit that exists in Africa. Most Africans, their use of energy you know, is for cooking and heating. It's not for industrialization. You know, um, which is why it is very important that there has to be a mechanism, you know, for compensating them, you know, and providing them alternative sources, you know, um, than the forest and the firewood that they use. While the world can speak about the uh, energy transition, the energy transition for Africa is for us to limit how we are depleting our forests for, uh, for agriculture and for firewood. We need to have a plan in place which involves the government, the private sector, and the people who are living in the communities coming together in a systematic way. And then you can design a plan that involves these stakeholders. We have been approached by um, some mountain reservation projects, and we're very keen to partner with them, along with several other such initiatives that um, seek to ensure that we can preserve you know, um, the forest that we know significantly absorb carbon. I think somewhere in Mambila. You know, um, so we, we are adopting that particular project. We're going to give it our full support. So as Nigeria, we can choose to do different, which is choose to use natural gas, never to use coal, choose to use um, solar, and wind, and then ensure that we conserve the forest that we have to get the maximum carbon credits from them. A key aim of the carbon market under Article 6 of the Paris Agreement is to help countries achieve their nationally determined contributions. These are commitments made by countries to reduce emissions and adapt to the impacts of climate change. 
In 2021, Nigeria submitted updated NDCs to the Paris Agreement, vowing to reduce carbon emissions by 20% by 2030 and 45% with the help of climate financing. It's very important for us to be, to have the right capital, but it's not just having the right capital, but that capital should come to institutions that are on the ground and doing the work. And there is a number of us that are credible. So uh, right now there's a lot of climate pledge money, but they are circling in the global markets. Most of them are going to other regions, Asia, where you can chase more carbon, but there hasn't been sufficient investor interest in Africa because a lot, a lot of the large institutional investors don't even have allocations for Africa. With alarmingly few forests left in Nigeria, carbon financing is one way to protect and restore this biodiversity. However, it is clear that this innovative mechanism alone is not enough. Current agricultural practices continue to threaten forests on the Mambilla Plateau. So communities surrounding these forests must be supported and empowered. Support for scientific research on African ecology is also critical for the value of these ecosystems to be recognized. Ngelnyaki Forest Reserve is reportedly the most plant species rich montane forest in Nigeria with great carbon sink potential. Without essential habitats like this, it is a fact that humanity and other life forms will struggle to survive. Leila Johnson Salami, Arise News. Thank you.